In this video, we're going to continue graphing absolute value functions. So, last time we graphed things that looked something like that. But this time, what we're going to be adding is a number in front of the absolute value. So here we have y equals 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3, plus 6. So the first thing we want to figure out is where we're starting with our y value. y is going to be 6 greater than all of this. That means we're going to be starting at where y is 6, right around here somewhere. In order to make y equal to 6, all of this has to be equal to 0. And in order for that to happen, we have to have x equal to negative 3. So we'll have 2 times the absolute value of 0 plus 6. So that means we'll have y equal to 6, where x is equal to negative 3. And that is our starting point of the graph. So the only thing this 2 does is this is the slope of the lines of the graph. So instead of having a standard v formation, where both sides have a slope of 1 and negative 1, the slopes are now going to be 2 and negative 2. So that means going to the right, we'll have a slope of 2 up to right 1, and a slope of negative 2 going the other way, up to over negative 1. And so we still have a V shape, but now it's a little bit tighter because the slopes are different. Now let's do one where we have a negative number in front of the absolute value. So first we figure out where we're starting. We're starting where all of this is 0, so that y will be negative 2. And in order for y to be negative 2, x has to be 5. So we start at 5, negative 2. So now, what the negative slope does is, this is the slope of the line going to the right. So if the line going to the right is has a negative slope, which means it's going like that, then that means the V is actually going to be pointed down, because the line going to the right has a slope of negative one-fourth, which will look like that. which means the other side has a slope of positive one-fourth. So it looks like that. And we have a very wide V-shape there. But the negative slope means that it is pointed downward. Now let's see what happens if we have a coefficient inside the absolute value. So what this does is we're still starting at where y is negative 3 because we want this whole thing to be 0. But in order for this to be 0, we're saying the absolute value of 4x plus 8 has to be 0. So in order for the absolute value to be 0, what's inside the absolute value has to be 0. 4x plus 8 has to equal 0. And if we solve this, we'll get x equals negative 2. So when x is negative 2, the absolute value of all of this is 0, which means y will be negative 3. So our starting point is negative 2, negative 3. And just like before, it doesn't matter if the coefficient is outside or inside the absolute value, it's being multiplied by x. So if you think back to y equals mx plus b, the slope is in front of the x. It's being multiplied by the x. So it has the same effect here, so that means this is going to have a slope of positive 4. And the slope is, since it's positive, we're going to be, the v will be pointed upward. So that means we have a slope of 4 looks like that. And on the other side we have a slope of negative 4.
Okay, let's do another one like that. Let's do y equals the absolute value of one third x plus one minus two. So we start at where y is negative two. And in order for y to be negative two, the absolute value of one third x plus one has to be zero, which means one third x plus one equals zero. So if we solve this, we get x equal to negative three. So we're starting at x is negative three, y is negative two. And our slope is one third positive, so that means we're pointed upward. So up one, right three, up one, right three. And now we just go in the opposite direction. And there we go. Now let's combine those two things together. So we'll have y equals 2 times the absolute value of 3x minus 6 minus 5. So again, always start out here where we want y equal to negative 5. And in order to get x to be 0, in, I'm sorry, in order to get y equal to negative 5, this whole thing has to equal 0. But let's think about this. We don't have to worry about this 2, because if 3x minus 6 equals 0, then the absolute value of 3x minus 6 equals 0, and then 2 times 0 will be 0. So all we have to get equal to 0 is 3x minus 6. So solving this, we see that x equals 2. So if x equals 2, then 2 times the absolute value of 3x minus 6 is going to be 0, which means y will be negative 5. So our starting point is x equals 2, y equals negative 5. Now let's look at what's being multiplied by x here. We have a 2 out here and a 3 here. So 2 times 3x is 6x, which means we will have a slope of 6. And then a slope of negative 6 on the other side. So as you can see, a higher slope makes the v narrower and a lower slope makes the slope makes the V shape wider. All right, let's throw in a lot of fractions in this one. Let's do y equals negative five over two times the absolute value of two thirds x plus four. whole thing plus 2. So y is going to be equal to 2 at our starting point and in order to get everything else equal to 0 we only need 2 thirds x plus 4 to be equal to 0. Again that's because if we can get what's inside the absolute value equal to 0 then the absolute value of that is going to be 0 and any number times 0 is 0. So we need 2 thirds x plus 4 to be equal to 0. So let's get rid of this fraction, multiply everything by 3. We'll get 2x equals negative 12 if we moved it over. And x equals negative 6. So our starting point is negative 6, 2. Because when x is negative 6, we have y equals 0 plus 2, which is 2. Now for the slope of this one. Again, we just multiply these two numbers here. So this will be 
negative 5 over 2 times 2 over 3 is going to be negative 10 over 6, which will be negative 5 over 3. So a negative slope means we're pointed downward. And the slope that we multiply here, you know what, let's, let's write this out so we're clear. Negative 5 over 2 times 2 thirds equals negative 10 over 6, which is negative 5 over 3. So slope of negative 5 over 3, that always determines the one going to the right. So because the line going to the right has a negative slope, that means it's pointed this way, which means the whole V is pointed downward. So negative 5 over 3, that means normally this would tell us to go up 5, left 3, but since we want to go the other direction, we, can go, we want to go down 5. So let's rewrite this as change in y of negative 5. And in order to make this fraction negative 5 over 3, that means our change in x is positive 3. So we're going down 5 and right 3. On the other side, we'll go down 5, left 3. And here is the V-shape. Okay, let's do another one of these. y equals 3 over 2 times the absolute value of negative 1 half. Negative 1 half times x minus 3 plus 1. So we're starting at where y is equal to 1. And in order to get y equal to 1, we have to have everything else equal to 0, which means negative 1 half x minus 3 has to equal 0. What's inside the absolute value has to equal 0. So let's multiply by let's multiply by by 2. So we'll have negative x equals negative x minus 6 equals 0. So negative x will equal positive 6, which means x equals negative 6. So our starting point is negative 6, 1. Now the slope of this one, be very careful here. Because this negative 1 half is inside the absolute value sign, the absolute value of negative 1 half is positive 1 half. So the slope is actually going to be 3 over 2 times the absolute value of negative 1 half, which will be 3 over 4. Not negative 3 over 4, because this becomes a positive one half since it's inside the absolute value. So we have a slope of 3 over 4. And since it's a positive slope, that means we're going up. So 3 over 4. And then we go the other direction. And there's our graph. Okay, and let's do one more. Y equals negative 4 over 5 times the absolute value of negative 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths plus 5. So we're starting out where y is 5. In order to get y equal to 5, what's inside the absolute value has to be 0. Negative 1 fourth x plus 3 over 4 has to equal 0. So let's multiply everything by 4. We'll get negative x plus 3 equals 0. Negative x will be negative 3, so x will be positive 3. So we're starting at 3, 5. And the slope 
is negative 4 fifths times the absolute value of negative 1 fourth. So we have a negative times a positive, which means we'll have negative 4 times 1 is 4, 5 times 4 is 20. This will reduce to negative 1 fifth. So a slope of negative 1 fifth, that means we're going up 1 left 5. But remember, because the whole slope is negative, the V is pointing downward, which means we have to go in the opposite direction. So that means we want to have we want to have a change in y of negative 1, which means our change in x will be positive 5. So we'll go down 1, right 5. And over here we'll go down 1, left 5. And we're going to have a very wide V-shape. And that is graphing absolute value functions. Again, we did some very challenging ones here, multiplying slopes, remembering that absolute value is always positive. Really, the most common graphs, the most common graphs typically only have a coefficient in front of the absolute value like this. But I figured I'd throw in some more challenging ones. And I believe this is going to conclude our playlist on linear graphs. So next we're going to get started with systems of equations or simultaneous linear equations.